from the Bronx and we ain't from Brooklyn. We from Queens. They made something that no one ever made before. They, the reason hip hop is as big as it is right now. I did not know until the last second that I was about to go do something so big and so historic. Kings from Queens, the Run DMC story is the new documentary following the rise of the legendary hip hop group Run DMC. From their days on the streets of Hollis, Queens in New York City to superstardom and of course their huge influence on pop culture. Bill Masterson is the film's executive producer. Good morning. Thanks for being with us. Good morning, guys. Thanks for having me. You know, Welcome from uh, Florida to Chicago. Oh, yeah. Well, thanks for being yeah. with us. Uh, you know, People have this iconic image of the Adidas suits and the, the, the whole look. How did it all morph into that, and how did it start? Well, uh, if, if you're talking about the, you know, the look of Run DMC, we cover it pretty extensively within the doc. It, uh, you know, it was three kids from Hollis who came from, um, you know, obviously different families and different backgrounds. And Jam Master J, you know, was the, uh, the, the credible street guy and dressed like that uh, always. And when they first started performing, it was just D and Rep. And when they brought uh, Jam Master J on to be their DJ, when they started to, you know, get gigs and book gigs, uh, Jay walked out one time with their music producer, Larry, and uh, DMC talks about it and says, that's going to be our outfit. Uh, and it was really just a traditional, it was a traditional look for B-boys and guys on the street. It wasn't really uh, anything that they were trying to put on costumes. It was just, that's the way they dress. So they came off the, you know, they came out of the studio and went right to the stage. And that became their iconic look. So, so take us back to the beginning here. I assume the documentary explores the, the true roots of this, of, of this amazing group here. Uh, tell us about how this group came together in the first place. Well, back in the, um, the early 80s, right around 83, uh, Russell Simmons was, uh, was the head of a company called Rush Artist Management. Um, young uh, Rev Run was the, was the son of Curtis Blow and uh, wanted to make his name into the music business. Had developed a relationship with DMC uh, from school and playing basketball. And they got together and one day Rev found out that he had a huge rhyme book. He also found out that he had tables. So they started practicing together and uh, I think fate took over. It was a serendipitous relationship. They started, you know, tag teaming, they call it, where, you know, one would finish the other one's sentence and they just started writing together and it became the start of what became one of the most influential hip hop bands of all time. Yeah, you have a lot of sound bites from a lot of people influenced by them over the years. Talk about that crossover impact on MTV of the Walk This Way video. Um, you know, it, it was it was uh, by some defined as their downfall, by others defined as the you know the biggest moment that it brought uh, two different genres of music together. Aerosmith was sort of on a on a tail end, and you know, in the doc, uh, the Beasties uh, call out the fact that Run DMC might have saved Aerosmith's career because they made them mm. more relevant. And at a time where you know, I think general public, uh, black and white, were trying to figure out what this new form of music war uh, was. This was just a really unique way that Rick Rubin, uh, who was one of their producers, brought together, you know, a hard breakbeat sound with this new sort of twist on what music uh, was becoming. And of course, a, a tragic chapter, right? The the loss of uh, uh, Jam Master Jay when he was he was gunned down in his studio, I, I, 2002 or 2003. Um, tell us how the documentary addresses that, that dark chapter. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the, with every, I think, rise, there is also a fall. With every accomplishment, there's, um, there are the steps it takes to, to, to achieve that accomplishment. And I think that the, uh, the unfortunate situation with Jay, um, you know, we wanted, to, we wanted to give Jay the, the send-off that he so well deserved. He was a very vital piece of the group. They called him the glue. Uh, he was uh, the band, uh, and you know, there'd never been a body of work that represented the amazing things that Run DMC did. And so, when we sort of sought out to to cover the most important things of of their career, unfortunately, this was a big part of you know when they broke up. And uh, so, what we tried to do is attack it sort of head on, um, but it wasn't a gotcha piece. It wasn't a who killed Jam Master Jay. Uh, in fact, 
Jay's kids uh, and his wife came on, uh, his wife did the first interview that she's ever done to talk candidly about who he was. And I think uh, in the doc, we did a really nice job of actually painting the picture of who Jay was. A lot of people knew Jam Master Jay from behind the turntables, but never knew who Jason Mizell was. And our goal was to actually give him the due and hat tip. And at the end of the doc, you'll see, you know, it was, uh, it was a true partnership of friendship that was really held together by Jay. And we wanted to really give him a proper nod to what he did for not just Run DMC, but for music overall. Well, it's called Kings from Queens, the Run DMC story. It's streaming now on Peacock. Bill, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you, guys.